Okay, so next week there's going to be a photo of Stam and me because we're going to do something together. But um, for today, I'm just going to talk about some of the things that we have learned that has helped us build a portfolio of images that our clients like, but also that we feel like excited by and, and really proud of. And, and it is it's one of the most difficult parts, I think, to get uh, the portfolio. A lot of us have the images, but just maybe don't have them displayed in a way that um, you know shows our work in the best light. So uh, yeah, just to, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Liam and together with Stan, we've been running Liam Pollard Photography for, uh, like I think we started, or I started the business eight years ago, a little bit more than that. Um, and um, Stan joined me, Stan joined me, one year later that that's why we get asked a lot about the name of the business <clears throat> and we are actually planning to change the name of the business this month finally like we've been talking about it for the last six years or so <laughs> um to include both our names i think stam's won many more awards than i have for her work so uh, maybe we should just change it to stam photography um something like that <laughs> but um yeah, so I'd already set the business up. This is up. This is my excuse anyway. And um, we kind of just got sidetracked building our portfolio and doing other things and working at weddings. And always talk, we talked about it quite often, but just never managed to do it. So if we'd met a year earlier, then the, the business would have actually been created when we were together. Probably would have started differently. But um, yeah, Stan has been very good about that, actually. She doesn't have a doesn't have any ego around it so we've we've managed to get through like that but that the business start I, I i quit my corporate job eight years ago and um started the business and moved to thailand quite soon after which is which is what, where i met stan but apart from being photographers we also help other wedding photographers to um improve their creativity their mindset um, and develop the business they want so you get yeah, so you guys can have the bit of business that thrives it's a competitive world out there and things change really quickly in terms of what works to get the right clients. But there's some, I feel like there's some fundamental things that you can do that are really going to help you. And some of it's around the actual photography. Some of it's more around business. Um, today's session is more around the photography and that just that fundamental aspect of your, your portfolio. So that's going to be today's focus. And some of these, we, we tried to do all of these things ourselves but um we've learned a lot of this stuff from other photographers um we've listened carefully to people that we really respect in the industry and that is the best by far the best way to improve your photos and your career as a photographer is just look look at the photographers that are doing well and start building relationships with people in the industry that you respect um and there's plenty of ways to do that i'll probably touch on a little bit um as we go through um <clears throat> I don't know how many of you have heard heard this as a suggestion for your work or been on workshops where other photographers talk about it, but curating your portfolio. Wow, it's so important doing this. Um, we had many examples of photos in our portfolio that just weren't weren't up to standard. You know, it should be your absolute best work. That is shown in your portfolio and the reason that we were given and i really believe it to be true is your work is judged on its worst image not its best image i'll tell you what i mean by that if you have 20 images in your portfolio and one of them is a bit average or the subject doesn't look particularly flattering let's say it's a bridal shot that you put in there because you feel like oh i don't have any i don't have enough getting ready photos in my portfolio so i'm just going to put this in there just try to, to beef out my portfolio. Anyone that sees it and they don't like it, they'll, they will wonder, am I going to get the type of photography I see in these 19 wonderful images? Or am I going to get this type of photography in this average image? And they'll be very worried that their photos are going to look like the average, the average photo. So less is really more. You don't need to show everything. You just need to give a little glimpse of your, your best work. That is the way to curate, so really be strict with this. And STAM actually helps me a lot with this. I like to try and put more 
photos in our portfolio that we need. So she's quite good at cut, cutting them down or, te- or letting me know when a photo I've taken isn't as good as I think it is. So yeah, definitely be careful with that. And it's something you can try and implement today going back through your photos. Updating your best work regularly. We can be, I'll be honest, we can be a little bit slack doing this sometimes, but it's silly because we're always, we're always taking new photos and it's great to see them up on your website, right? It's great to show new work and update if you've got some hero images on your homepage, updating that stuff so it's fresh, up to date with your best photos. Because if you look back at your work from a few years ago, if some of you have been doing it for a while or if we do, our work compared to today, was, you know, it's moved a long way. You know, we, we laugh at some of our photos from a few years ago because uh, we just didn't have the understanding that we have today. And so that what we thought was quite good, what, you know, perhaps wasn't particularly good. So update your best work and you'll be, you'll be giving yourself a chance of attracting the clients that you want and just giving a refresh on some of that, that the older, the older stuff that you've, you've been working on. Yeah, so curation as well, if you're, I mean, we've just started a Facebook group, some of you are already in there, so you can do, you can do this in there, it's a good way to use the group. Um, You can post a link to your website um, and ask other members in there that are also trying to build a successful career, so, you know, there should be some community around that, everyone's trying to help each other. Um, You know, what do they think? Ask for feedback and... um, you know, whilst feedback is not helpful unless it's constructive, it's good to hear other photographers um, feeling about where you could improve stuff or what they love about it, um, what kind of photos they feel really stand out. So be a little bit vulnerable. If you never ask anyone except your best friend or your family um, what your photos are like, then you'll probably be told they're good, but you, you're not going to get the information that you need to make them better, which is what I'm saying. Sorry, guys, it's Bob's, Bob's heard someone at the door. So I suppose that's how Facebook lives are. <laughs> Unexpected things happen. Um, okay, yeah, very early on, I got a mentor and me and Stam have had a couple of mentors since then as well. Um, it can be pretty lonely running a creative business. We're lucky because we've got each other. Um, so we can bounce ideas off each other. But even with that, we need to be getting different perspective on how we're running our business and how our work is progressing. I remember we spoke to, we had a few um, over the series of a year or so, we had um, five, six calls with Ben Christman, he's a great photographer if you wanna wanna check him out, um, about our work. And we had quite a few photos in our portfolio that we thought were really good because they were really hard to set up or we, we felt like technically they were difficult or we had some emotional attachment to them that actually weren't that great. There was other photos, uh, even from the same sequence of events at a wedding that were were better once we had someone's different perspective on it. So trying to get somebody that you can speak to and get honest advice from, I think that's what a mentor is. That's why it's a bit different to having friends look at your work. Having a mentor that has your best interests at heart is gonna tell you, this is great, but I tell you how you can make it even better and giving you some insight on how you could do that incredibly valuable way to to kind of um grow your portfolio and make it more more powerful more strong um yeah just just mentioned that already about getting honest advice on how you can improve an image really helpful and getting compliments that's nice too it's nice to get them from a mentor as well and so hopefully you do get some compliments for your work um but definitely doesn't teach us as much or me and Stammer fan doesn't teach us as much as getting some insight into what could be better. Um, we actually went to a fearless conference in Bangkok uh, recently where, where, where we submitted some work, which was great. So you, we got some great insight there on you know, how stuff could be better. And uh, I went to, you know, I'm always trying to keep improving. So one of my peers in Asia, Julian Wainwright, great, great photographer, he used to be a press photojournalist. I went to one of his workshops in Vietnam, same thing, got the opportunity to submit um some work there along with the other guys that were on the the workshop and it's really helpful to hear an experienced photographer's um perspective on my photos and also other people's photos so you can see 
uh, you know, what's good and what ingredients could be could be improved a little bit. <clears throat> we were lucky with this at the beginning. Um, I certainly knew exactly what style I liked and Stan was, uh, Stan was similar. Um, so we didn't actually have a problem with this, but I do know a lot of photographers try to incorporate many different styles of wedding photography into their portfolio. And, and when it's not consistent, then as a phrase I heard is more of a marketing phrase, but it's true for, for photos and a portfolio, I think. When you try to speak to everyone, you speak to no one. And if you have a defined style, not everyone's going to like it. There's many, there's many brides and grooms that would never book Stam and I for the style that we shoot, especially in Asia. There's many, many couples that prefer a, a very different style to ours. But the ones that do come across our portfolio that book us, they love it straight away. So the, the inquiries we get are extremely strong. So being true to yourself, finding a style that you really like, and pursuing that and not diluting that style by trying to show every style is, I personally think it's the most important thing. Show what you love shooting. It doesn't mean that's all you shoot at a wedding. We do lots of family portraits, lots of detail shots, but we don't show them on our portfolio on our website because the clients, our ideal clients don't book us for those photos. So that helps us to attract the clients that we want. Have a think about what made you fall in love with photography. If it's portrait photography, then be inspired and go and shoot portraits um, outside of the wedding day as well. But at the wedding day, make that a focus. Make sure the bride and groom know that's what, you, um, that's what you're known for. And you'll get couples that want to spend time doing long, a longer portrait session in the morning. Uh, if it's the bride, uh, she'll be expecting it and wanting it because that's what you're showing in your in your portfolio. And you're just going to be better at it. If you prefer that to, to more documentary style and you want it to be a large part of the products that you produce, then just show it. Show that on your website and you'll attract that kind of bride. Yeah, using photography and art to inspire you. So we try to bring elements of, I love travel photography, love landscape photography. Um, I love portrait photography. So I try to bring elements of other photographers that I follow from those different genres into our wedding photography. So we're not just being inspired by the wedding photographers and things can all start to look a little bit the same, but trying to bring in aspects of these other types of work into our wedding photography means that there's always a fresh way to be looking at stuff. I feel like that a wedding, you can do anything you want. You can shoot any type of photo you want during the course of a wedding. That's what's so great about them. So do that. Be inspired by, um, <clears throat> excuse me, things you like and try and bring them in. So um, art as well. There's a great portrait photographer um, called Canadian portrait photographer called uh, called Joey L that uh, Stam and I like. Done an online course of his before, and um, yeah, he talks a bit about different types of lighting that portrait photographers used inspired by famous artists so uh, Rembrandt lighting is a very dramatic type of of light that that artist used and was famous for using and you can recreate that type of look it's quite dramatic which we love uh, when you're shooting portraits in photography um, you know essentially trying to recreate that type of artist's impression of a portrait in the camera um, I find really inspiring. So we, we were always looking for that type of light, even at a wedding. Looks especially cool on a, on a groom. Um, so yeah, bring, bring those outside influences in. How's it going over there, Beth? Um, yeah, just have a quick look if there's any questions or comments that Stan can tell me about. Yeah, I'll just have a quick look. Um, let me see. Mm. Where are you all? On the pier. Russell. Hi, Russell. <laughs> yeah, 
Okay, guys, nice to see so many comments. Have you got any questions um, about what we're what we're chatting about? And yes, one question here, will we be saving this video? Yes, we will be saving this video um, afterwards. So um, if you've got any questions about what we're talking about, I will try and pick a couple of them out. Um, so do, um, do post them in there and Stan will let me know about them. Um, okay, so creating new work often, practice shoots. So <clears throat> doing practice shoots, it can be, could be with a model, um, could just be with your, you know, another photographer that you're friends with, or going out and just having fun and doing some street photography and things like that. Doing that often is, is really important because it's a bit like I, I have a terrible back and ankles and all my joints are, are pretty creaking to be honest. <laughs> Um, so, um, I do a lot of yoga, but if I don't do yoga regularly, then my body starts to get stiff again and I'm not, very, I'm not very good at it. I'm not a good practitioner of it. And it's the same with photography. If I only do, um, photography at weddings on the, the days I'm booked for weddings, then it's not going to be enough to improve, um, and really develop, uh, the style I've got. And I, you start to go backwards. I think I've had periods where I haven't. Uh, focus too much on on this kind of thing about creating new work and feel like the work gets stale really quickly so continuing to practice and practice things you like things you're inspired by is um is really helpful um i don't think you can ever get to a point of not not needing to do this to, to keep your work fresh so styled shoots really good if you have time to organize with uh dress suppliers or florists, wedding planners, people that you connect with in the industry. And if you like that kind of style sheet, you can use it in your portfolio as well. You know, you've got a lot of time to take the photos you want and not just the photos um, that you feel you need to take at the wedding day. And then again, that will help you attract the clients that you want. So if you into that kind of photography, then setting up some styled shoots is um, and collaborating with other people in the industry, great way to get going. And just last one here, I think Stan wants to ask me something, but um, so we've got a little Sony RX1R. Um, it's an extremely expensive point and shoot, so I'm not necessarily recommending uh, wasting thousands of dollars on one, but they are really good fun. Uh, and the reason they're good fun is because they're small. And we personally find that we're not prepared uh, in daily life to take a bigger camera everywhere but we do want to have something to photograph with because then we're always looking out for opportunities and inspiration and ways to keep our, those creative juices flowing. So try to take that with us as, as often as we can. And also Stan, especially, is a great photographer with our iPhone and our iPhones are, are fantastic cameras now. You can take, especially during the day, you can take amazing photos with it. So take your camera or a camera with you. I'm sure you've all heard that cliche that the best camera is the one you've got with you well yeah i think that's true but that actually get it out and try and use it as often as possible um will just keep you moving forward creatively did you have some question there yeah yeah let me see i think it's there from luke. from luke let me see okay um when you start a wedding do you get there early to shoot the venue would you advise this or turn up close to the time they've asked for um okay luke that's a good question actually um i don't want to i won't go too deeply um into it but i think it's a quite straightforward answer for for us we are trying to shoot real moments and if you're trying to shoot real moments it's not so much about the venue although we do take details when we first get there because pointing a camera into at the bridal party straight away. Uh, they may not have met us, but the bride and groom have met us. So they're normally comfortable, but the bridal party that are all there, it's an intimate space. So starting with details is a way to get people used to your energy being in the room. So we get there earlier because we can then spend a bit of time saying hi to the bride and groom. 
if the bride's having her makeup done, we always go in and actually we'll go over to where she's having it done and go down, you know, kneel down to her level and just gonna have a chat with her without the camera and just get her comfortable with us being there. So I find that the body language of that is really helpful. And so the reason we're there early is not so much about the venue, although it's a good time to probably get some of the venue photos. In Thailand, we find it at dusk is a good time to get venue photos. So when we're doing weddings out here, we maybe don't do them in the in the daytime or earlier in the day because it's too bright. But you certainly can in the UK and places like that. But it's more so that you can have a little walk around, say hi to people and just be an open and friendly human first and then a photographer second because that's how you're going to get access to get all of the nice uh, candid stuff so we shoot with a 35 mil lens that's being pretty close to people that are in a very intimate space so to do that with access i just find you need to be there before you've started shooting for a little bit so people have got bored of your energy and used to your energy being in the room so that's the reason we get there a little bit early hope that help is helpful um okay yes community stuff so we like we were saying before it's pretty lonely being a wedding photographer sometimes um and um can be difficult to take on um you know being vulnerable putting our work out there if you're anything like me i used to find it terrifying sharing my work because i didn't want to get rejected <laughs> and be told it was rubbish so um there's a lot of great communities out there. I mean, we, we, we really like the fearless photographers community because there's a lot of photog inspiring photographers in there that we love the work of. We love their philosophy on shooting. Um, and it's a great community that's been built, but there's many that like looks like film um, is great. Uh, you rock photographers and many places that you can get involved in. And yeah, share your work if, the, if that community encourages you to do that. Submit it to, to some of the industry awards, not not for the ego of winning them, but it's just good to let your peers look at your work and give you feedback on it. So that's why we do it. We, we don't go crazy with that, but we do submit to, to Fearless. Um, very rarely win because it's very difficult. You know, there's this, you know, all the best photographers in the world are on there, but it's just great to be part of it and look forward to the photos that come out and be inspired by all of that amazing work. So get involved in that stuff. Don't be afraid to do it. Like, and we all start from, from no, you know, we'll start from zero at the beginning. So it's just a good way to, to improve your work. Um, try and be part of the conversation as well. Just this is, I've had this in other groups, in, in business groups and stuff that I'm part of as well, but um, just important when you are part of the community, try to actually be, you know, actually give some feedback on other people's questions and posts when you've got experience of it. And when you do that, um, and pe people will notice, the regular members of the community will notice that you're part of the conversation. So when you do ask for some guidance, some help, some feedback, you're much more likely to get a response than if you just post stuff all, all the time, are, are, you know, trying to take things from the group, but haven't actually been part of the conversation before that. I found there's, you get a, a lot less feedback in those situations. Um, yeah, and also it allows you, if you're part of these groups, like I said, for us, we'd, we'd look closely at the fearless uh, community. It's a great way to be inspired. I see stuff every day on that, um, on that community that's like, wow, that's just incredible. And I, you know, I've never even thought of taking a photo like that. And this is after eight, nine years of being a wedding photographer and trying to push ourselves creatively as much as we can. There is always stuff on there of people doing incredible things and yeah, I, I really like it. So I think it's a good good way. Even now, we, we don't feel like, oh, we know enough, don't need to do that. No, we're constantly looking at these communities of photographers where we're inspired by the style and it, it helps us with our creativity. Yeah, so I, I feel like attending face-to-face -face meetups, workshops are really helpful because you get a really deep understanding of how a particular photographer works and exactly what their processes are. So I'd encourage you guys to do that <clears throat> once the COVID restrictions have lifted and you're able to go to face-to-face -face workshops. If you've got the budget to invest, I would do that. Invest in, in a, a workshop, maybe rather than some new equipment next time you have the budget. Um, I think you won't regret it. It's a really, really good way to build uh, your portfolio images, get an understanding of how others work. Live events are great. As I said, we went to a, we went to a fearless 
conference in Bangkok recently, which was like a couple of days of learning, which was amazing. Um, just get to meet other people. There was quite a few photographers from Vietnam. Some people work that work in Thailand and people from all over Asia there. It's just great to be part of the community and actually talk to others about how they're doing stuff. <clears throat> And try to, I mean, me and Stan do this in, in London. We, uh, last, we were, I think last year when we were back, we met up with John Mould and, and Mike Garrow, two, two good friends of ours that shoot weddings in the UK, both great photographers. It's just so helpful to go and, and hear what's challenging at the moment, because it's normally the same stuff that we're finding challenging. Talking through things and just having a good time with people that are on the same path again with creative development and the mindset and approach of a wedding and how to overcome challenging situations to keep getting better images i find it so helpful it's completely it's priceless doing that actually because um stops that feeling of isolation sometimes we have because we're all working from home and for ourselves um do you have something else babe no yeah, just say hi to a couple of people oh. So just give me a sec, guys. Let me see in the comments what's going on. <clears throat> oh, yeah, okay. Jack's watching. He's not a photographer, but he's a good old friend of mine. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> um, hello, Sharon Bank as well. Luke, nice to hear from you. Nice, good question as well. That is actually very helpful. Uh, Raphael, Anthony, good to good to see you in here, mate. Cool, Adrian as well. Abu, Steve, Raquel. Oh, that's a client. That's an old client of ours. Thanks for watching, Raquel. I know, I know. Like, <laughs> we'll have <laughs> we'll have to share we'll have to show some of your wedding photos um, next next time we're on. Um, that's one, of, one of our favorite guys. weddings. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, good to see you. Um, okay, just let me try and finish this up for you guys. I'm sure you've got other things to do with your, your Friday. So um, I was told this really early on, actually, just to keep learning. As soon as I think I know everything about shooting a wedding, then my work's going to get stale. And so having that attitude that there's always new ways that I can approach things, there's always new things I can learn. And um, we talked about this actually at the fearless conference we went to and it's, it's so true just being open to new perspectives and new ways of thinking continues to develop us as photographers and and helps us build better images in the day so um it's funny now i've been doing it eight years i now kind of know that I, there's lots that i can still learn whereas at the beginning there was more hubris around it where you i did i'd done a year and then i thought i knew everything but actually i didn't really know anything so just so keep, keeping keeping an open mind about that and trying to find new ways to to do things is is um is a great way of, of stopping you getting getting stale with the portfolio um yeah we we try to do like online courses on creative live um and things like that because it's just a, not necessarily wedding stuff in fact i don't think i've ever ever bought a wedding related um course to watch online i've been to workshops face to face which are great um but doing online courses it just it's just a creative challenge you watch it and like for, you might learn some new ways to retouch some new ways to color grade your images some different ways to light portraits if that's what you're into all of this stuff is just going to keep you moving forward. There's so many ways to do photography that I, I just find it's, it gives us a lot to, to do this stuff. So at least once a month or once every other month, I try to put the time aside to, to do an online course of some sort to, to learn some new skills, practice a little bit different methods. And yeah, I mentioned before as well, the one, tour, one mentoring, if you can get it um, from photographers that you like, find somebody that's got the business, the career that you like and try to get some help from them is invaluable. So I'd say Ben Chrisman helped us quite a bit a few years ago. And then I, more me than Stan, but at the beginning I had Mike Garrard who's based in the UK um, and, and does some quite a bit of training, uh, does quite a bit of training himself. He mentored me a lot and he's still a good friend of mine and just learning his processes on how to manage stuff, how to build his portfolio, it, it accelerated me 
through so many mistakes I could have made by just uh, readjusting things I was doing as I was going along. So it got us to where we wanted to be far quicker than trying to work it all out on our own. So yeah, lighting. I, this For me, this is the thing that got me into photography. I just love lo dramatic light, especially images that are lit beautifully. Um, so understanding how light affects your images and just going out and practicing with that. So if you just go out on a sunny day and try to understand where you need to stand to use the sun to get a silhouette, where you need to stand to use the sun as a backlight or how to create a slightly underexposed image by having direct sunlight um, on your subjects. These are all ways to develop your understanding that's gonna help you define a style and a portfolio is gonna stand out. I feel like for wedding photography, certainly in Asia, you can't, you can't shoot a wedding in Asia because it gets dark early. Uh, certainly in Thailand, it gets dark at six and people don't wanna get married till sunset because it's, it's too hot. So that means 90% of the wedding is actually at night. So to not know how to use or create any type of light you want using flash makes it very difficult to take interesting images for a large portion of the wedding and just gives you flexibility. It's not that it's nicer than natural light. It just means you can create whatever you want whenever you want to. It's the, it's the creative freedom that you've got. That you're not restricted to what's available. You can create anything that you want. So spending some time doing that will give you loads of options to create interesting images and maybe slightly boring venues, what, what look to be boring. You can create something that no one else can see using flashlight. This one, I didn't really understand this at the beginning because I, I used to think of oh lighting, thinking about lighting is more about when I'm photographing a portrait or I'm when I've got full control over the image. But actually, now I follow moments around a wedding and I Stam does the same thing and we work around the subject so that we can create different types of of a look and a feel and a mood based on where the light is in relation to the moment that's happening. So just a basic example is having a bride normally near the window, having her makeup done. So the obvious shot is to just get that soft light coming through the window onto her face and that's great. But if you go the other side, you might actually find there's some really cool silhouette opportunities or yeah, so moving around the subject, you'll see that there's ways to create dramatic light that's maybe not the most obvious. There's ways to create really nice soft light if you're at the right angle, get very flattering light on her face. So trying to move around the moment, same for, for the candid stuff. We might have a destination wedding where the bride's walking down and she's, you know, her face is in direct sunlight from one angle, but if you go the other side of her, uh, then you can get nice backlight from the backside that so you could then use the sun to create silhouettes like I was saying at the beginning. So you can do all of that during one sequence of moments at the wedding to create something interesting. So I would always say get the decisive moments, go get the safe shot first. Stam and I are lucky because we can, one of us can always look for something different and creative whilst the other one gets the safe shot. But if you're working alone, get the shot you need to get and then work around the subject and just try different things um, and play with the light that's available. Don't think it's exclusive to portraits playing with light. This is this is where you can really have fun as as real moments move past. The personal projects. We try to do this as often as possible. So we travel quite a bit with our wedding photography. So that's very fortunate for us. We're really lucky to have clients that invite us to weddings in different places. So we work in Greece, Italy quite a lot. Um, work in Thailand a bit, Hong Kong quite often and Singapore. So when we're there, we, we try to do personal projects, travel photography. We like going out on the street and just capturing life that's going on. And those skills are great for bringing to a wedding. If you like documentary style wedding photography, then photographing out on the street is a really cool way to practice that craft. Um, doing it for the enjoyment and not the money as well when we're traveling is is really nice. Sometimes you just feel like you want to shoot what you love and not necessarily do do it for a client. And so every time we're there, we, we always try to spend when we're traveling an hour or so a day out with our cameras 
just playing, just playing and having fun. So keep, even when you get really busy with your wedding photography, don't just shoot weddings because it will, you'll get bored. You'll get bored of it doing that. Whereas if you do your personal projects as well, um, your photography will keep improving. Helps you understand what you love as well. So I, I actually really like photographing moments at a wedding, but I do love taking portraits of people, you know, when we're traveling. So asking, uh, you know, I asked a, a priest in a church in Greece if I could come and do a portrait shoot with him when we were in Santorini last year, which was fantastic. And we've done many uh, local community shoots where we've gone and actually met and interacted with some cool really amazing local communities in Thailand and other places in Asia and done some portraits there I love doing that so that's what improves me as a photographer going and trying to practice in those kind of situations and helps you master your craft as well because you can play you're under no pressure to deliver for a client so it just keeps improving your work Let's see what we've got here. So, yeah, composition and storytelling. So multidimensional images, we'll go more into this in some other training where we can actually look at some photos, but <clears throat> just an overview. Oh, just one sec, guys. I think Stan wants to ask me something. Hello, Deb. Nice to see you on here. Tack as well. Tom Gore. Tom Gore. And my brother. Lots of my non photography friends. Um, oh, we got Yara and David. That's our possible client. Oh, yeah, some of our clients as well. Nice to see you guys. Hi, Yara. Hi, David. Um, okay, so just let me finish this off for you guys. So composition and storytelling. Yeah, okay, so we, we'll go into actual the how to do this in, in other training. But in terms of what to do, trying to look for compositions that aren't just of one person necessarily. So we shoot a lot with 35 mil. And try to, firstly, it means that not everything is so blurry if you're, if you're shooting with a wider lens like that. And that means you can create compositions. Stan just posted some great photos. We, uh, we'd taken a lot of them of hers from the groom in the morning. You can see on our Facebook page, Liam Collar Photography Facebook page. And um, you can see there's quite a few of those where the pictures are layered, where there's interesting elements in the foreground and then very clear elements in the background as well. It gives this like three dimensional um, storytelling composition to the photos looking for ways to do that are a great way to improve your portfolio and getting on wider lenses where it's allowed you to do that and pushing aperture up to you know 5.6 or if the light allows even up to seven try doing that a little bit more and capture more of the scene to tell a tell a more complex story capturing emotion I feel, I mean, obviously in a, a wedding's an emotional place, but it's really easy. And I did this a lot in the first few years to something amazing's happening. And I'll take a few pictures and then I want to review to see if I've got a nice photo. So I'll, I'll be looking into the camera to, to see what my photo looked like. And then the best moment that's going to happen is actually after the obvious moment. So don't look in the camera and review your photos until later you know when the bride and groom are eating or something and you're not actually photographing at all but so many photographers put the camera down too quickly and they miss all of the best stuff so just really try to keep shooting keep capturing the moment keep working around the moment you'd be surprised how interesting the photos become um a one little tip i'll give you which is not the most interesting part of the day but there's lots of beautiful moments that happen are when you're doing formal photos and then before the group changes and you finish taking the actual formal setup picture and people looking in the camera, I always have the, the, the shutter on silent at this part of the day uh, using Sony cameras. And I just say to them, I leave the focus locked on and then I just bring the camera down 
and say, okay, guys, you know, we're done, we're done here. And then everyone relaxes, the constructed photo is done. And there's normally like people hugging and congratulating before the next group come in. That is golden stuff to capture. I feel like a lot of people would miss it because they're just focused on that formal shot. So try to be aware that lots of nice real moments happen at that part of the day, lots of nice emotion. Yeah, and just looking for the less obvious story. So obviously the bride and groom are, are the most important part of the day and we, we are focused on following their story, but we don't always have to be, have the camera focused on them to follow their story. So looking at the other dimensions that are making up, for example, the first dance. So you perhaps are focused, you have the foreground element of the bride and groom, but you're actually focused on the friends cheering and having fun in the background doing things like that and looking for ways to create more interesting photos i think is uh, is going to help you see a really big improvement in the the portfolio that you create for your clients to look at okay that's it guys we've come to the end already i don't know how long i've been waffling on for so <laughs> i hope some of you have <clears throat> Hope some of you have stayed all the way through this. Let me have a quick look. Um, sorry, was there, oh, there was a question, one more question. <clears throat> Let me see. So, uh, okay, this question from Luke. It's a little bit of a different subject, this Luke. So I'll try to cover it in a, in another training. But yes, we do do quite a bit of commercial work. I'd need to know a bit more about what you mean. Are you trying to charge the models for a portfolio shoot, or are you being hired by a, are you being hired by a commercial client to create um, some kind of uh, work for their port, you know, for their a new website or something like that? But um, we can discuss that possibly in the group post that that uh, that question but just wanted to focus more on wedding portfolio building um today that's my friend from a workshop in london anything else can help with Did you post this what? comment from us where to get inspiration online? No, I don't know. I don't know why it's that come up. I was I was wondering about that. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, okay, guys, I think that is pretty much bringing us to the end of this um, this free chat that we're doing. We try and do it a bit more often, but join our Facebook group. You can you can find it through our Facebook page. If you're interested in taking things further with your wedding photography, then feel free to um, send us an email, info at liamcollard.com. You can chat to us a little bit more there. And we'll also be in the Facebook group we've created uh, fairly often with some new and interesting stuff we'll be covering around. Uh, we're trying to, we've, we've just found that there's a lot of uh, learning possibilities out there that are either focused on creating beautiful images or creating better business processes. And we just feel that to get to where we've got to, the two things are, they're not separate. There needs to be a balance between beautiful photography and understanding how to grow your business and getting more visibility online. Because if, you have, if you're the best photographer in the world and you have no idea how to market your business, no one's gonna see your work. Um, but if you're in incredibly good at marketing, but your product isn't very good, you may get some business at the beginning, but it would be found out quite quickly from people's real experiences that they're not getting the products that perhaps the, the marketing is suggesting they're going to get. Uh, so that also doesn't work. So it needs to be a really healthy balance between the two things to build a sustainable and profitable business. So that is the stuff we're going to be trying to help you guys with moving forward so uh, thanks for tuning in all of you we'll try and do i think going to try and do facebook live again next week probably next friday 
I will post some details what we're going to be chatting about then and maybe do some photo reviews and critiques in our Facebook group as well fairly soon. So keep your eyes open for some of those details. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Sam, you want to say goodbye to everyone quickly? Thanks for looking at the comments. <laughs> Bye, guys. Um, I definitely will join the chat next time. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.